when we were looking for problems to help artists with, are you sensing a theme, by the way, with the artists? Artists, is that message coming across? So while we're looking for, you know, looking for problems that artists in Unity have that we could help them with, one of the things that you know, sticks out is that it's kind of hard in Unity to orchestrate different things happening in your scene over time. You know, it's easy to, to script something like when you hit a, hit a brick against the wall that an explosion should happen, but things like I want the camera to move there and then three seconds later audio to start and then I want to do a fade in and then this dude should walk in. Stuff like that is not super easy to do. And I'm very happy that today I'm about to show the solution we've been working on to make that easier. And we call it Timeline. Today, we're going to see two demos of Timeline. And the first one it will be done by Adam Myhill. Adam has, for the last 10 or 15 years, been obsessed by cameras. And Adam joined Unity to bring his experience in this area to our team. He's, he's written a really cool procedural camera system in C Sharp, and he's been able to take that camera system and plug it on top of the public Timeline API. So let's see how he uses Timeline to drive his cameras. Thanks, Lucas. Hey, Adam. Thanks, Lucas. What's up? So Timeline, we've been waiting for this, right? Timeline has the standard features you'd expect from a, a sequencer, like it supports animation, of course, and audio, and it has uh, auto keyframing and a multi-track interface with the ability to lock and mute tracks, all that good stuff. And a lot of in, uh, time has been spent on this because we know if you're making cutscenes, you're going to be in this thing for like hours, weeks, months. So it has to feel right. Um, Timeline lets you support the ability to create your own tracks, and this is what's really cool about it. You can create your own tracks, you can create your own clips, and you can control them all from the interface of Timeline. And because they are their own clips, you get like the, the benefit of Timeline's interface. You can blend them, you can extend the clips, you can repeat tracks, and you can control practically anything you, got, you have in your game. You can get this all for free. It's like the choreography of multiple elements, your game elements in Timeline. So when I started doing cutscenes, this was a long time ago, I, had, uh, I was really frustrated because you're, you're building these these big cutscenes, and you lay out like hundreds of camera, cut uh, camera keyframes, and you get the scene all set up, and it looks good, and then you go home, and you come back the next day, and it's broken. You know, an animator's changed an animation, and your cameras just don't work with it. So we decided to fix this problem. We made this thing called Sin Machine, and I'm going to show you this today. And what's cool, because of the open architecture of Timeline, we're controlling this thing that we made that we didn't even know about Timeline at the time, and we're all controlling it with Timeline. Um, because it's completely open. So look at this. It works like you are a director directing a camera operator. You say, hey, shoot this, sh this shot. I want the guy to be on the left. You can see that we're tracking his eye. And you can change the composition. You can say, no, let's move him over a little bit more. You can move the camera. The cameras follow your direction. So, so there's no keyframing at all in here? There's no keyframing at all. And what you do is you, you give the cameras intent, and then they follow the scene, and they shoot the scene appropriately. So let's blow this open. Let's get this bigger. We're going to run the scene. You can see here, these are all shots. And what we're doing with Timeline is we're just blending the notion of shots. We're just saying, this is a shot idea. Compose it this way. This is another shot idea. Compose it this way. And you can cut, or you can blend. And we're doing all this in Timeline. This is a massive blend just between two different shots. But the animations, the FOV blending, the positional blending, you get it all for free with, with the, the Timeline interface. So are all these clips, are all procedural cameras? They're all procedural cameras. There's not a single keyframe. Look at this. So you can just see, this is a wide shot. Also notice there's little procedural handheld noise. That's all tunable. So we got this wide shot. And he's doing whatever. Not super exciting. We see his animation. Cool, we got a cut coming up. We cut. But with Timeline, and this will happen with anything that you make in Timeline, you get the benefit of the, this interface. Watch this. We drag it over top. Now, what was a cut turns into a push. And it blends everything. So this is an entirely new way of making cutscenes where you can go away, and they can change a character model, they can change an animation, and you come back, 
And I'm not saying it's 100% bug resistant, but it's probably going to be OK. <laughs> and the cool thing is you just, like, it's fun to work, and you're like, oh, that happened a little bit too soon, so why don't we just drag that blend a little bit later while the game's running. It saves all this stuff, even you're in edit mode. And you just work very, you work very artfully in this. You work like you're a camera operator or a director versus keyframing cameras. It's not fragile. Hey, and when we ship Timeline, are we going to make these cameras available somehow? Yeah, it'll be as a Unity uh, package, uh, free on the Asset Store. And we'd like to show you more about Timeline. We have a talk on Wednesday at 3.30. So please come check it out. We show you so much more than just this. Uh, thanks, Adam. Really Cheers. cool. Thanks, Adam. <laughs>
Uh, next year, Octane Render and Orbex will be built in to Unity, all editions for free. It'll be shipping to six and a half million artists, and we think that the future of cinematic rendering is going to be you know, fundamentally transformed by this collaboration, uh, and we really think that the future is very bright. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what that also means for media that's generated with, uh, with Octane and Unity. Uh, when you generate these VR renders, uh, these cinematic scenes, they can be exported into Orbex media format. Um, those, uh, those renders can actually be published to the cloud, and they can be played back at absolutely incredible fidelity, 18K on the Gear VR. Here are some samples of uh, Adam in the keloid scene. And I want to show a video of this running live in Orbex Media Player, which showcases the scene we just had loaded in the Unity Editor, um, playing back as a VR film. So there's Keloid running at 18K on the Gear VR. And in fact, if you go to the Unity booth, you'll be able to experience this on the Gear VR. And we're publishing these scenes uh, live, right at, the, uh, right at the end of this keynote. And you'll be able to experience them in a number of different places uh, in VR. Isn't that amazing? Uh, the last part that we're showing here is uh, light field render. So you with position tracking, you'll be able to move your head through these scenes uh, as they're playing back. And uh, this content will, will be supported uh, in Oculus Social, in the Samsung Internet Browser, and Oculus 360 Photos. Wow. Thanks, Jules. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. Really, like, really, really cool. I'll let me summarize that a little bit, because the first time I heard it, it took, me a while to, it took me a while to get it. So the Octane render that you just saw that rendered that movie that I wondered if it was a movie or computer generated. And the next, you know, the next thing I saw was having that scene open in the Unity editor and driving it with a timeline. And even, you know, I even like that, that frog model or whatever it was that I just got from the SS store, that it's not like that was not a sexy model. It's just, you know. It's just a thing with the texture map. You throw it in, and it, you know, it, it completely fits into the scene with the fire and the, and, the, and the robot dude and Adam. It just it blows my mind. And what blows my mind even more is that next year we'll make this render available in Unity. So, and that means Unity Personal, Plus, and Pro. So all Unity users that want to use Unity to create non-interactive content can use the Octane render. And the visuals of this quality are now in reach for all artists that want to use Unity. I'm incredibly, incredibly, incredibly happy about that. <laughs>